regulars, I'm Dick Lancey. I like to give a little introduction here um, to our speaker. But first, give you a heads up on uh, classes that we have planned for the future. Although I will, will caution you, next week there is no class in deference to the train show that's in town. I certainly encourage you to uh, go to the train show. And there are discount tickets available uh, for purchase here in the store. You might think about that. It's a couple of bucks. Uh, and the uh, uh, classes that will be coming uh, after that uh, will be a scenery class and then uh, following that, uh, a class on uh, wiring uh, your passenger cars for continuous lighting. So, uh, and you can check our uh, web, uh, Facebook page and website for the whole list. And in fact, uh, there, there's a little brochure right on the uh, left-hand side of the main door there, which will also be uh, All right, well, let's get started for our presentation. It's quite a information unique subject, but it's one that's going to be more and more activity as our hobby progresses in sophistication. And I can't think of anybody that's better to present it than one of the luminaries here in the model railroading community. Um, his engineering background allows him to get involved with our subject, which is layout command control. And so it's a pleasure I introduce Jeff Thank you. Thank you. Luminaries, huh? I've been called a lot of things, but never a luminary. Thank you very much, Jerry. And I, I really hope that the presentation here today isn't. Um, one that is received with like, oh my gosh, that's way out of my, my realm. Um, I'll share with you that I was looking for something just to do signals. I really just love signals. I like the lights and switches and stuff like that. I think that's just a fun part of the hobby. And there's some systems, I'll get into it. Uh, but what I found out is even though there's lots of wires here, even though there's a lot of stigma, um, it's actually a pretty simple system. So I hope to break some of that fear down for you guys. Hope to make it a little bit more approachable. And if you have any questions, please let's make this an interactive time here. I really want this to be a time to communicate. So we're going to talk about layout command control, what it is and what it can do for you. Um, got the logo there, and, and, and again, the signals are what really turned me on about it. A little pun there, two thirds of a pun maybe. But. So what we're going to talk about introduction into what LCC is and does. I don't want to get into the weeds. I don't want to. I'm not going to talk about the hardware and the and the details of how the architecture was developed and the NMRA codes and all that. We're not going to get into that. Uh, but you know enough so that you understand the pieces to make it work. How do you integrate it to your layout? We're going to actually configure a node. Uh, some simple examples how to install and use. The last time I was here, I didn't have the board. So this time we'll take a little bit of time. So we basically have an LCC demo layout going here. And I hope afterwards you feel free to come up you can look at the pieces, parts, and get your head around what's going on here. How do you spell your, spell your first name? Detlef, D-E-T-L-E-F. Yeah, you're done. All right. How many of you know what DCC is? Everybody raise their hands. It's been around since the 90s, really. Mm -hmm. And so I've got a DCC system here. Um, MRC is what I use at home, pretty basic. Um, I've got it wired to the layout here. What I want to point out is that the DCC system runs the trains. The LCC is for the layout. DCC stands for Digital Carrier Control and Digital Command Control. And the LCC is Layout Command Control. So this is for the layout. And I know there are systems out there that will do that. I think Digitrax has systems and stuff like that. But we'll get into the details why. But let's talk about DCC. Basically, it's just a, a, a digital signal signal that sits on the rails by varying the width of the pulses. That's how you get commands up and down the tracks, right? That's pretty much how it works. Plus, the power on the rails is enough that you can run your engines. Okay. And that's that's not what we're going to talk about. So, what's different about LCC? Well, that. LCC is on its own network, so it kind of stays separate from it, right? You can run the trains on one, and the LCC layout can, can run it on its own bus, if you will, that does its own thing. And one of the things about running with DCC, and like I said, there are some places that you can use DCC, but I got a picture here of a train station, and what happens with DCC is everybody's talking at the same time. That's the way DCC is set up. Every locomotive, every 
car, every command station is constantly talking. And each locomotive decoder, every receiver listening all the time for its little special knowing, its, its, its name, you know, the address. And, and think about at a train station, how many times have you been around a large group of people and hear the announcements? It's like, what did it say? Do you know what I mean? And so it ends up happening, even though theoretically, for instance, you can have 10,000 locomotives on there. How many of you have been at an operating session where you've got a bunch of people and it just seems like there's more and more latency on the system? You know, you bump it up, you turn on the light, and yeah, it comes on, but it's like a half a second or a second later. What's going on there, that rolling wheels and stuff like that is making static on the track. And it's having a hard time picking up. Yeah, they call it network contention. Everybody's trying to talk. Railroad station, okay? The other thing is it's a pretty low data rate. Okay, not to get to the weeds, but 8,000 bits per second. Most of our phones are on gigabits, right? Millions, billions of bits per second. 8,000, even our dial-up. Remember our dial-up was 55 kilobits? You know, this is you know, almost a tenth of dial-up pretty slow. What's the reason for that? Because of all the noise. You got railroad wheels, you got static, you're picking up junk like that. So you want to make sure it's slow enough that you get those signals through as quickly as, uh, as clearly as possible, but it gets congested. So what's the big idea? The big idea is fine. You put your DCC on one network and then you have a high speed network next to it. That's for your layout control. That's totally separate. That's the big idea. So put your track detection, your turnouts, signals, turntables, crossing gates, anything. I know people are putting their layout lighting on this stuff. Once you've got this network that's separate, it's quiet, it's high speed, you can do all kinds of stuff. You're not trying to drive your trains with it. Any questions on that? Make sense? All right, you ready for the deeper dive now? Should we get into it? Uh, let me ask you one thing first. Yes, sir. Uh, I hope I'm not jumping ahead, but with respect to turnouts, if you've got some uh, what are stationary decoders yes, sir. that are running your turnouts, and of course they're on your DCC bus, right. will they translate over to your LCC? Uh, can you yes. use them on LCC? Yes. Thank you. And I don't have a slide on it, but let me just explain how that's done. There's two ways to do it. One is an LCC to DCC converter, and there are some some systems that have the French and Digitrass has um, um, I'm trying to think what they call their local bus, right? And it, it translates the DC into something local in there. And so I don't know much about local net, but you can bring that into JMRI. LCC can also go to JMRI. And so through that JMRI connection, you can talk between the two systems. I have an MRC system at home, also has a Wi Fi connection into my computer, which I can run JMRI on, which I run my LCC on. So you've been to my operating sessions. The turnouts that are on the old part of the layout are all DCC stationary decoders, and it just goes through that JMRI connection. Uh, yeah, you bet. Any other questions? That's a good question. Okay, so how do we unload the DCC bus? So we've talked about some of these different systems out there. LocoNet, which is Digitrax, it's peer to peer. It's one of the most popular. If you've been through a lot of bigger layouts in the area, you've seen people using LocoNet. Um, Kind of the negatives are it's very proprietary. You're in local net or you're not. They don't really play well with others. And it's relatively slow. It uses the same protocol as the DCC, so it's about 8,000 bits per second. Um, some folks have used ExpressNet. I haven't really seen it. It's more of a European thing. It's based on the RS-485. Any of you guys work in industry? RS-485 is an industrial protocol, so it's pretty robust, and that's out there. And then do you remember Bruce Chubb? You know, he, he's one of, one of the guys that inspired me to model railroading, frankly. I mean, his Sunset Valley is phenomenal. Look it up. But he developed this thing called uh, CMRI, called uh, Computer Model Railroad Interface. And uh, But all of these required a central computer. And one of the things I really wanted is a layout that I don't turn on a computer. I can just let, I come into the train room, flip on the power, and the whole thing runs on its own. I don't want a computer. I want it to be tight. So anyways, those are some of the differences. So let's talk about why LCC is so much different. Um, it's truly a peer-to-peer -peer system. And so what that means is, for instance, this node in here, the one with the green lights on it, it's its own system. It can be powered up and it'll run by itself. It doesn't need a computer. It's got logic on board. It'll look at I.O., inputs and outputs. It'll run the signals independent of anything else. 
And what it does is if it gets some sort of a command or whatever, it'll broadcast that over that, you see that ethernet cable there? It'll broadcast that to anybody else on that network. So it's a real true peer-to-peer -peer network that's standalone. You can put as uh, any other devices on it. it has some I'll show you some later stuff, but it's, it's got incredible uh, access. Um, Bidirectional, so anything can talk to anything else. Takes a load off the PCT bus. We um, talked about that already. Open architecture, it's license free. Uh, anybody can develop a LCC protocol. In fact, I don't know if you saw TCS just released a throttle that's LCC compatible. So that's kind of cool. And it's supported by NMRA. And I, I got confused. You start doing Google searches on LCC and you'll see this thing called Open LCB. And it's like, what's Open LCC? Whatever that is. So here's the technical definition. There'll be a quiz on this at the end. <laughs> it says layout command control, LCC <laughs> is the NMRA approved part of open LCB. So you know, these committees work on these standards. And so open LCB is the big idea and what's been approved becomes LCC. I know it's a technicality, but you'll see the two terms used interchangeably. Okay, so let's talk about what LCC is. So it is really the physical layer. It's these boxes, it's the communications. And it's based on something CAN, which is called controlled area network. How many of you guys have a car and you have an OBD reader? How many of you guys have the little light that says maintenance needed? The guy comes in and plugs in the little reader and you can figure out what your error code is. It's the same protocol. So what these guys did is they basically took the protocol used in our cars and applied it to model railroading. The beauty of it, what's our cars run? 12 volts, right? What's most of our railroads run? 12 volts. So it works out great. It's, it's, it's noise tolerant. We've got spark plugs in cars, all this other stuff. Perfect for our situation. 125 kilobits per second and 1,000 foot maximum length. Anybody have a layout bigger than 1,000 feet? <laughs> I think we're covered, right? So most layouts. Now, crazy as it may sound, there are LCC bus to LCC bus interfaces. Should you ever have more than 1,000 foot, there's a box that translates and gives you another 1,000 feet. So you can keep on multiplying them. Um, this is if you're a double E, it means something, operates at 100% data throughput with error free collision resolution. Thank you. That's another quiz question. It allows microcontrollers and devices to communicate without a host computer. And that was what was appealing to me. I really just wanted to flip the switch on and it does its thing. And um, in, in cursive, there, right now, things are coming out that have the interface capability. LCC standards support Wi Fi and Ethernet. And they're starting to come out with the boxes that will actually interface to Wi-Fi and Ethernet. Now think about this. When I got my layout going, I can now put it on the internet. I can have somebody dispatch in New York City because it's going through the internet. I know, you smile and laugh, but you think it's like, this is actually pretty cool. People can actually communicate with each other through the internet. A couple of pictures on the bottom, um, you know, just to give you an idea of what's going on. Any questions on that? Does it make sense? I thought there was something else I was going to mention on this, but it'll come to me later. Okay, so what? How does it work? So the whole idea on LCC is it's event-based. So anytime something happens, uh, a, a detection has happened, somebody pushes a push button, it creates something called an event. That's a producer. So you got a push button or whatever, or something, some button gets pressed. And that event gets broadcast through the network. And what you do is you configure these events and then you have what's called a consumer on the other end. You turn on a light or you throw a switch or whatever. And I'm actually crawl back here. I got a little push button. You can see the, the network light flash. So every time something like a, a push button gets put, I'm gonna go ahead and do a detection. See what I mean? So any of these is really creating a detection event and it sends a broadcast out to the network and then everything else is listening. Any producer can be used by one or many consumers. Now think about that. If I got a yard throat, I could just have a single push button that says take me to track six. And you can set up the logic so that that produced signal, that push button I just hit lines up, turn out one to normal, turn out two to throw, turn out three to throw, turn out, you know what I mean? And you can configure this super easy, and I'll show you how easy it is. But does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Is this very hard? Oh, okay. <laughs> so.
So what got me into LCC is, yeah, if you've been to one of these classes before, I did one on Arduino. And Arduinos are super cheap, like five bucks, 10 bucks boards that are doing all the logic really well. And it got has a bunch of IO, but you gotta program. And you gotta get into this whole C plus programming and it's just a pain. And that was me not long ago. <laughs> So what they've done, and uh, these LCC folks have done, is they set up basically all the, the firmware, so it's really just point and click, drag and drop, and you can set up all your events. And I'm going to show you how to do that. You just assign an event a name. It could be a normal name. It doesn't have to be a dot with a lot of codes behind it. You can call it throat switch number one. And that's what it's called. What an idea. Um, but you do need to keep track of it. So that's one of the things I did, by the way, when I first started, is I started using all these fun names. It was like, what was that for anyway? <laughs> and then that name will be recognized universally throughout the LCC system. Let's go through the pieces. Um, starting off with a power supply, and you'll see that here. Basically, the network requires some sort of a power supply. And you'll basically set up your layout with these different nodes, and usually you put a power supply at each node, okay? And you have a computer interface. Um, that's what this little box right here is. As I mentioned, you don't need it to run, but you will want it to configure your system. Um, it, I also jumped over it, but there's this little terminator. So your basic network has to have a terminator, and then you daisy chain your network together, and at the other end, you'll have another terminator. You see this little guy right here? So that tells the network the beginning and the end of your string. So you just daisy chain it all the way through. What's next? Then the actual node, that's where the smarts live. And then you have your standard ethernet cable. Now it's not ethernet, it's a different protocol, but you can go to Micro Center or whatever and use their, their conductors. It's pretty pretty straightforward, it's nice to be done. So there's eight, uh, yep. eight conductors? Yep, eight mm -hmm. conductors, standard ethernet connector. Mm -hmm. Nothing special. So those are the parts. <laughs> How do you get the information in and out? There's two flavors from RR circuits, and I'm only mentioning them because they're the only producer really in a, in a large scale. Uh, TCS just came out with their throttle, but RR circuits is the only one that's producing LCC components at the moment. They have two types of cards. One is a, what they call the tower LCC, and the other one is signal LCC. The tower is 16 inputs and outputs. The signal is 16 outputs for signal lamps complete with pre-set up resistors. So the, all you have to do is you don't have to put any resistors on for your LEDs or whatever, your signals are ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then you got eight IO lines for you, like your push buttons or whatever. So with that, you basically start building up your layout. The tower does your turnouts and things like that. Signal LCD does your lighting. And then there's some things that you need for your conditioning and I'll show them up here. You have your detection input card. There's uh, the BOD8. Um, there's a stall motor driver. There's a sing the single coil solenoid driver. And you use pairs of these, of course, for your dual coils. So all the cards are there. You just start piecing together your system on how you want to run it. And that's how it goes together. So you have your, uh, I'll just, sorry if I'm walking in front here, but basically you got your PowerPoint. You daisy chain your, your cable on and down. You have, let's say in this case, a couple signal LCCs. And then you have your IO cards, which is where you have your inputs and outputs. So some track detection, your stall motors, your signal wires, they all go into there. And you start building up your layout. Any questions? Pretty straightforward, frankly. So uh, how... Um... <laughs> The little thing on the far right, what, what, what did you call it? That BOD4-CP, what is that again? Um, sorry, where, on the far right? Yeah, no, you're almost at it. Oh, this thing? Yeah. Okay, so, all right, let, let's back up. Yeah. So your inputs. Okay, that's the tower L, LCC. Tower and signal, so these two black connectors on that side and the yeah. single black connector here, mm -hmm. those are inputs. So they take any kind of um, uh, TTL 5 volt logic. Input. So it's all set up for like a push button. You don't even have to condition it or anything. But let's say, you know, how do you detect like track or whatever, right? So you need something to detect, uh, translate it to a, just a plain old digital signal. 
So what they do is they basically have these cards that translate. In this particular case, on the far there, the detection card, it has a, and come up here and you'll see it, but basically, well, I'll just tip this up. This is so much easier to see. Okay, so here's your brains, okay? That's the tower card, now the signal card is what it is. The IO card is here. Yeah, that'd be great. Drag it all the way out here. That'd be easier. Okay, let's, let's see even better. Everybody see this? Okay. So here's your power supply, right? And we have one node on our network right now. And so this is the, the signal LCC card. The signals are coming off of these connectors right here and driving the signals. Notice I don't have any resistors or anything else in here. These are just LEDs and all the resistors are on the board. These are my IO cards. These are the detectors. Um, I have this cable coming through here and this is where our IO board is. So what is, it's, this is, a, these are using um, what are called CTs, current transformers. Here's my DCC bus. I have power going to the track, right? Just like you have your feeders on your track, right? And what these do is I just take one conductor and I run this little coil through it. And basically, you guys remember from your class, your physics class, if you have a coil around the wire, you make a little induced current. It takes that induced current and says, oh, something's on the track. I will put out a signal that says it's on or off. Here, watch this. Can you turn on? Oh, I need a, I need a DCC. Got to power the track. Jerry, I need to make these connectors longer. Right? Notice I got some latency built into this. So that way, if it's intermittent, I don't see the signals dropping in and out at you know, a couple seconds. Yes, sir. So those transformers then that are um, on the outside wire, they're, they're detecting the current. Exactly. As opposed to like having an infrared or a exactly. motion detector. Exactly. So you don't need the motion detector infrared at the Exactly. Okay. Because I didn't want to worry about where the car was on this piece of track. I just wanted somewhere on the track, as long as there's a resistor on the wheels. But this thing will interface. There's, um, if you look up on websites, there's lots of, for the infrared types, that have outputs of 1 to 0 to 5 volts. And you could wire that directly into the signal LCC. Does that make sense? As long as it's just a TTL logic that goes in, any kind of detector board will work with this. This just happens to be something that they offer directly out of your system. But that's detecting a current then on the entire length of the track or in a certain section? Like well, I have, I have gaps okay. cut in. Gotcha. So yeah. yeah, so I was I block here, I was locked here, I was locked here, got gotcha. and then a block over there. Okay. And those so those would be where normal stuff feeds to the track? Yeah, this is just your straight DCC. Notice there's nothing really touching. These CTs are just passing current through, but they're not actually, the DCC system is totally separate from LCC. It's nice because the detectors then aren't like in your board or in your layout then they're actually exactly. in the node. Exactly, you have to think about it. If you have multiple drops on a piece of track, you have to put these ahead of the first drop. But other than that, anywhere that you have, will pick up the detection that you've got something on the tracks. So, you know, again, to summarize, this is the brains. It takes any kind of input, zero to five volts, and this conditions the signals. And they put, and every input and output can be either an input or an output. So I could have replaced this with, well, a stall motor driver. Actually, this board has inputs and outputs. So the outputs are on this side, and I have a stall motor driver. So now this flat cable here, though, that you buy and cut to whatever length of yep. run you need to make. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Could you have multiple drivers then attached to one node? Or do you have to have an individual for each one? Let's go back to this guy. The tower LCC has two slots for two black connectors. So you could put two of these I.O. cards in. The signal LCC is only one slot, but it has all these LED drivers for you. So you only keep one of those things. That's why I used a signal LCC with what they call a BUD4, basic occupant detector four, but it also comes with um, four IO points. So I can just push, push buttons and install motor drivers. 
it, it, you know, they actually think about this and it is really pretty smart. So if you have a staging yard, for instance, I, I just put in a ton of BOD eights because I wanted a bunch of detection for my staging yard. And then the, the staging yard throat, I put in my stall motor drivers. I can run eight stall motors off of one SFD eight. And then, you know, since it's all physically kind of the same area, I just wire all my stall motors. So if you had a very large layout with lots of, uh, say, a large rail yard, yeah. A lot of switches. Yeah. Would you need several of these systems or would they all? Yeah, I would I would start going through tower LCC and you can see why they call it a tower LCC, right? Because if you're thinking you need a bunch of switches, okay. that gives you 16 so input. Yeah. yeah, because if you think about it, you got 16 input output lines and then you put SMD eights on them, you get 16 switches with two SMD eights plugged into one tower LCC. 16 yeah, switches really are pretty, lot of switches. that's a lot of switches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Start building it up. I thought I'd just do a couple critical areas. It's terribly addictive because once you start getting it automated, you're like, well, this is really cool. <laughs> and then you put another order into our circuits. <laughs> it's like Christmas time. What's the cost of so your typical, you know, the nodes themselves, the signal in the tower LCC are around 60, 65 bucks. You know? And then these IO conditioning cards are around 30 bucks each. 400 bucks. So I did the math. It turns out on average for my layout, it was around three bucks a point. So it's not the cheapest. But yeah, that's where it ends up. So let's rewind a little bit. Now that you guys are experts on this, you got the two signal LCCs, you got the two uh, signal conditioning cards, and you have the CTs, you have stall motor drivers, you have fascia push buttons, and so on. See what I mean? It looks complex, but once you start thinking about it, it's just like, well, it's more of the same. I'll show you a couple examples of how I put it together. Um, that was Christmas for me. I got this package. <laughs> My wife is very generous. She is, she's, she's a cool lady. I love her. <laughs> so I put a bunch of terminal blocks across the back part of this panel. These are uh, PSX breakers because I wanted, um, I, I wanted the yard separated from the main line. That way if somebody derails somewhere, it's not stopping the whole land. And then I have my, I, in that particular case, I have two tower LCCs and you can see how the, um, the I.O. boards, I think those are SFDs, just plug right in. Yeah. Down here is the power supply for the network, and this would be the local interface. What about board? That was a piece of quarter-inch plywood that was in the shed for way too many years. I just painted it white. <laughs> it looks much fancier than it is. You don't realize, like, wow, you couldn't have spent five bucks on a nicer piece of wood. <laughs> This is what it looks like after I got it a lot uh, wired out. So here's my bus for the DCC, all the different leads going out to my staging yard. And you see the CTs? And then I just ran jumpers over into the I.O. cards. And, and, you know, you just put on the music and get your iced tea going, wire strippers and soldering iron, and you start just cranking away with it. So your detectors, your little coils, you can have actually sort of back at all of this, they don't have to be near the track they're detecting. Yeah, for me, I have a, you can relate to this, I have yes. neck issues and I, I, I have a hard time right. spending a lot of time looking up. So I brought all my feeders back to this panel here and I just put the detectors and I, the only thing I have back at the layout are the, the drops going up into the layout. So, I, and even there I use those suitcase connectors. Yeah, right. Is it just at the end of the night, I'm not doing so well if I'm mm -hmm. spending all night looking up. So I brought it all into one place. But it can be done either way, Jerry. Mm -hmm. All right, any questions on this? And then we're going to dive into how to configure these nodes. How are we doing on time, boss? All right. Okay. Um, how many of you have you used uh, JMRI? Okay, about half. So it's a free download, zero cost. It's my kind of price. Um, you just you, And it comes with two elements, Decoder Pro and Panel Pro. We're going to use Panel Pro. You open up a panel, you set up your layout, 
You can figure nodes. And we're going to do this live, so you don't have to remember this. And when you get the window open, you'll see your network show up. It's that easy. I'm going to show it live just to show you how easy it is. You click on open configuration dialog. And remember how I said you don't have to remember any programming or whatever? Here it is, line one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 16. Give me the description. Is it an output or an input? And you just start pointing and clicking. You just start working through it, top to bottom. It's that easy, guys. Now there's some, you know, learning, you know, how do I want to do this kind of things. But in terms of having to actually program, it's really not there. The other cool thing is it doesn't live on your computer. When you hit right, it says refresh or right, you're actually sending it out to the node. You can unplug your computer after that, and it's it's in the system. You don't have to have your computer going. Does that make sense? So this is what I called it, staging, detect, center, and west end. Click, right. It turns orange to let you know it hasn't been written yet. How cool is that? It's like self-documenting software. And then you start going through the different things. And I'll show you how to do that. So, oh, okay, I, that, this is a good thing. Um, line description. This, this screen shows the consumer commands and the producer commands. So consumer command. When this event occurs, that secret code gets hit. And when that happens, what will happen? Well, nothing will happen in this particular case. Producer commands. In this case, it happens to be detection block. It will actually produce an event that gets sent out to the layout. Like I say, you're just grind through it. And I'm just showing some examples. So then you got you can have in this particular case, it shows you a consumer or producer, you can have up six different events happen. So when some let's say something gets detected, you could turn on the crossing gates and throw a switch. This is how you also do like reverse loops that auto switch back. You could put a detector on the back part of the reverse loop, and if the switch is clear, you can auto set up that the switch throws again. I mean, it really is. It's really more of a blank canvas. You can do almost whatever you want with it. Oops, did I go too fast? Some of the slick implications, it executes logic without your PC on. We talked about that. Multiple control points. Oh, I had a, Jerry, you remember this on my old layout. I had a Y where it was on two sides of the aisle. And we had push buttons on both sides that we wanted to throw switches on. Well, that was kind of a nightmare in terms of wiring with the old DC and discrete wiring. Plus now I want a CTC panel somewhere, right? And I want to throw this Y. Well, suddenly that all goes away. I can put a push button anywhere on the layout, plus a CTC panel that says throw the switch and it could send out a command through the LCC system. The switch is thrown, everybody switch your indication to this other mode. It's really kind of a neat thing. Um, something else was economy of communication. It's local decoding of a command. What's going on inside, for instance, this is a little heavy, but hang with me. If you've ever worked with Digitrax or any of these PC-based computer systems, um, uh, logic systems for railroads, all your logic resides in the computer, right? So if I say this train just crossed into a new block and turned the signal red, in the computer, I have to say, turn off the green light, turn on the red light. And it has to go out to the layout, turn off the green light, turn off the red light. Well, here, instead, you can just say this. The command is, I need to do an approach medium. And at the node, what does that mean? Oh, I'm going to turn this one to yellow, this one to yellow, this one to red, this one to green. I can do all that logic at the node. I don't need to have all this data going back and forth. I know it really doesn't matter. At 125,000 quad, it's not like it's going to go. But it's something that the nerds would like. OK, so let's try it. This is the nirvana of signaling in my mind, just a simple control point. And that's what we have set up here. So before we get into the demo layout, any questions? All right. All right, cool. You want to sit down? No, I'm not. Oh, I'm too jazzed up to sit down right now. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you how easy it is to configure this thing. So this is this is kind of risky because I actually didn't preset this up. I'm actually loading JMRI right now, real time Panel Pro. I didn't set this up before you guys got here, okay? Just to show you how cool this is. 
So this is panel code, it comes up. Open LCD, configure nodes. Here's your first node, and there's only one node on this network. Did you notice something? This is actually reading the network right now. Now watch when I open this up, open the configuration dialog. You see the lights blinking out there? It's actually reading everything off that node. So I got LCC test layout, EOD4 CP, that's the IO board. And literally, if I want to put a description here, I write it. Now I've configured that onto the board. It's pretty neat. So I've got line one is the occupancy detector right diverging, occupancy detector right normal, the turnout. The left lead that's on the far side there, the turnout normal, turnout reverse, and the push button. So, for instance, on the push button, I've got the description turnout control push button. Oh, this is really hard, isn't it? <laughs> output function. Is there an output function on the push button? Pop quiz. Is a push button an input or an output? No, it's an output because you're completing a circuit, right? Am I, is it an input to the logic or an output of the logic? It's an input. It's an input to the logic. So there's no function. And this is, a, it's an actually an input function. It's not, it's not an output. This is kind of cool, by the way. Check this out. So I could make it active high and active low, but this one is alternate action low. In other words, what I'm actually doing, check this out. Every time I push this button, it's sending a command first, set it to normal, push it again, set it to reverse. It's actually sending out two commands with the same push button. It alternates back and forth every time. It, and, and it's with one click. I didn't have to write the logic for that or anything else. Now, if I had two push buttons, I could say normal and another one named reverse. But I'm calling this one alternating action. So I just, with one push button, could do two functions on it. OK, stuff excites me. <laughs> You can tell. <laughs> um, I'm not using this section here, delay time, but if you wanted stuff for blinking, pulsing, debouncing, I could add that in. And here's the section for producers versus consumers. So I could I could create up to six events from that particular thing, like a push button as a consumer, or I could do a producer six different events. So in this particular case, check this out. I only have one event really that's using, and what it does is it turns on or off these different signal lines. Now, how cool is that? And we'll get it. I don't want to get into the weeds of it, but you keep scrolling down here, all kinds of logic. This is where the logic for the signals comes in. It goes on and on and on. And this, remember how I said that you could have this economy of signals and stuff like that? One eastbound signal, westbound main, westbound siding, one signal mast area here, I can have up to eight different right on site on that signal LCC port. Check this out. How do you want to have the individual lamps appear? Lamp one, two, three, four. You want them steady? You want them slow flashing? You want them medium flashing? You want them alternating because there's the A and the B? It's all pre-configured. So if you wanted to have a, like a crossing gate, you do alternating back and forth A and B. If you guys are uh, into um, prototype railroads, there's something called track circuits. Basically, track circuits convey the signal indication down to the next signal. It's all built in here. So if you just want to look at whatever the next signal is, this is already built in. And <laughs> as if they haven't thought of everything already, you can actually set the individual lamp intensities. You know, let's say that your green's too bright, your red's too dim, you can go through and tweak your, you can see how I put in different numbers here because the greens on these were just obscenely bright. And, and you can actually configure real time um, how bright they are. So this particular one, what was it, 20? I'll go back to 128. I'll write it. I don't know which signal it is. It's one of these really bright ones. Right now. So I can bring that back to 
what was it before? 20? I don't know, I hope I got the right one. Anyway, that's how you configure it. Any questions? Um, so the JMRI, um, do you have to configure it to, to do the LCC or is it already set up? Like, uh, do you have to bring in a uh, template for LCC or no. just, it's all, it's just the way it is? Yeah, check that out. So JMRI, there's this um, file, oops, references. Jerry, remember when you're saying that you wanted to connect to your DCC system? Mm -hmm. I have, as I mentioned, an MRC system here, so I can connect to MRC through a serial port or whatever. All I did here was just set up uh, open LCD. My serial port was COM4, and it found it as soon as I plugged that in, it knew where it was. So this is how I would add another system if I wanted to hook into, let's say, you know, Bruce Chubb's system. Not, there's nothing there right now, but if I had one, you know, there's, there's not one available. But through JMRI, you can link all your different systems together. It's really pretty cool. So the JMRI that is detecting that you're into a yes, LCC sir. system and then so yes, sir. it's a data all the different configuration choices they have. All right, let me just show you something here. Let me close this out. Let's quit this thing. Now the LCC system won't work now because it needs a minimum of two nodes to operate. And so two nodes would be the single LCC. And since I unplugged it, look what happens. JMRI is unable to connect. So it's looking for at least one connection somewhere. So if I exit the program, I plug this back in. Should be happy. So you can start doing like mock configurations without without the hardware. Because the hardware itself is it's where it lives. lives. Yeah. This is just a window. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? We're all going to be awake tonight while all this spins. You remember those pictures that you kind of blur your eyes and suddenly see this three dimension? <laughs> remember those? That's what this is. At first, it looks really scary, but the more you get into it, it's like, oh, this is almost intuitive. It's really that simple. Yes, sir. So, I guess my biggest question then is I've been looking at the DCC plus potential system yeah. um, using Arduino. Yeah. And what I'm seeing here is that. The differences are the, there's not as much programming right. at all, and the other like, the cost is a little bit more with the LCC compared to the DCC plus. But what other differences would you see in terms of scalability? Or, yeah, yeah. See, I, I, I think we're on the same wavelength because um, I set up a junction with an Arduino, and it took me weeks and weeks for programming, and it's still under a red flashing under a certain condition, it flashes like twice as fast as normal. And then I started thinking about because I built out the layout. What if I had you know five junctions or ten junctions? And then I got to write all these communications protocols. Honestly, that's what drove me to taking the plunge into LCC because I couldn't, I didn't, I couldn't justify spending the time writing all that code to communicate all that stuff. But the functionality is pretty much. I think they're almost identical because if you look at the Arduino, it's a plus minus five volt interface. It's the same right. interface as these. Right. That's yeah. That's why I'm just. In, but it seems like they're, you know, obviously there's more work. It's less expensive. Exactly. Okay. And if you go onto there's actually Arduino model railroad sites, mm -hmm. and they have codes and all this stuff. You know, the sketches. Right. Pre pre written. Sure. I I just I guess I got lazy. Just like this was so easy, but not functionally. I don't think there is anything that's really fundamentally different. Because you control like 
building lighting and everything through this. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. I don't. I'd have a hard time, frankly, if just between us. You know, stays in the skiff. I don't know, whatever. But if it was for building lighting, if it's for um, just accessories, you know, I, I think there's some really cool Arduino sketches out there. I would just do that with Arduino, and I would do staging our CTC panel signal lighting with, with this because. DCC, DCC plus, and LCC. I know people are doing it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Theoretically, you could do it. So. Theoretically, you could do it. And it's all open architecture. LCC is open architecture, so the protocols are all there. Dylan, thank you very much. If people want a copy, uh, just a little bit about DCC or LCC, rather.